So I thought I'd do a quick introduction to fields, um, which can be used with any sort of simulation inside of Bifrost, not just particles, but I thought I'd show you to now. Um, they're a slightly abstract thing to get your head around, but hopefully I'll be able to explain it. So let me just make a new graph. And I'm just going to get rid of these two, I don't need them. I'm going to make a terminal. So we can sort of look at these things. And if I go tab, I go core, I've got all these fields down here, all this stuff. Um, and what a field is, basically, uh, if I make a fractal turbulence one, and I'm just going to plug it into a field scope. So we looked at um, volume scopes before. Uh, they're, they're very handy scopes for sort of visualizing the data in a, you know, as a visual thing rather than just numbers. So um, you get two types of field scopes. You've got a vector and a scalar. Um, scalar scopes work with scalar fields and vector scopes work with vector fields. And vector fields are directions and, um, uh, what are they there? What do we call it? They're, they're, they're a direction and a force, basically. You can think of them that way. They're sort of like an arrow pointing in a direction. And the length of the arrow is how fast it, that direction is going, as it were. Um, and the scalar is just a point in space with a value. So this fractal noise, turbulence, fractal turbulence field, if we mouse over that, we can see underneath here it says it's a vector field. So if I plug that into that, if I plug it into that, we will get this and this is a visualization of this field um, so if I um, let me just do make that slightly like that to and then just make this into flow lines so what you can see is a noise field of forces directions so um, if I do this, let me flatten it down just to one sort of level of it. You can see that these arrows, these little pointy bits, it's a force going like that around there. If I actually make this a bit stronger, you'll see it. Um, and if I make that a bit more, so you can see they're basically forces, vectors going around in a sort of noise. It can be with a noise texture, but this is like a flow line. So if you had a particle, it would flow along there. Um, and the powerful thing about these is, unlike, unlike a sort of 3D texture, these are infinite. Um, this will go on forever, and I don't even think it repeats. Um, it's just, a, you know, it might repeat ultimately, but it's not like noise texture where, you know, after a while it's going to repeat and you're going to get tiling. Um, but the thing about these, which is sort of the big important thing, is obviously an infinite noise texture would be massively heavy to compute. And what's good about these is these aren't, these are implicit, I think is the right word. Basically, they exist, but they don't have any impact on the memory or computational until you ask to sort of look at them at a point in space. So at the moment this vector scope is asking to look at the field in this point in space. Um, and if I made a bit of geometry, let's do that, let's put that back to, just to scale that up. And if I bring that in, I'm put that as probe geometry there, and just hide that H. Um, actually, I'll just give it a bit, a few more. Let's do 100. There we go. Uh, tidy this up. Get rid of that. So, I've just added probe geometry, which basically is just show the vectors on this geometry. So you can see there, if I've turned this down a bit now to five. So that's the field being sampled on that plane at that point. If I move the plane, 
you can see it's just being sampled and you can see how quickly I'm just moving around and the sort of important thing which I'm trying to sort of get across is that though this exists infinitely in infinite space this sort of texture going on forever it's only brought into existence as it were as it were when you sample it at a position so these are being sampled at the position of this plane um, and as you see if I push it up swim through it if I move it along just moving through that field so what's great about these is because you only sample them at the, at the point you want them they're very low to be computed and very low on memory so they work very well and they're very quick um, but there's a couple of things you've got to think work think have in your head when you're using them is that you can't just sort of plug them into stuff they've got to be plugged into other field things so if I wanted to plug time into here and you know animate it like you can with the noise field um, and I make a time node the time and you just try and plug in seconds to that it will error because it needs a field so it needs to be sampling time at these points so you need a scalar field because obviously uh, time is just a float number and a scalar is basically a float number so you need to plonk that into there and then put that into there and then this will work so when you hit play now you can see it's animating and the same with vector fields you need to make these rather than making a value you need to make a vector field or a scalar field to input numbers into these things um, so you know I've got a field here and it's just basically a turbulence field um, if I just turn that off let's move this over a bit so turbulence field scalar field time um, I've got a plane so let's make a basic particle graph let's explode that let's put my plane into the source particles uh, into proxy let's just turn off gravity uh, source particles let's live forever turn off any motion so it's going to be static hit rewind so now I've just got these particles which are generating on the plane which I've hidden so if I want to pipe in this turbulence field into this simulation if I go uh, force you get a thing called set influence force which is what we want and if we zoom in here tidy this up a bit uh, let me just hit L there we go uh, set influence force got my turbulence field there if I plug that into the force plug the out of influence into influences hit play now you can see that that's emitting into that um, and if I add a drag node and put that into there, I'm going to up to like 10. So basically, only the it's not in here, it's just going to use that force and nothing else. You can see we're now being just going into that turbulence field. And you can see it's quick, um, probably quicker than the, no, it probably won't because they're made out of these. Um, anyway. That's a quick intro to what fields are.